Hi, hello everyone. In this session, we are going to learn how to tracking payload as is in Oracle Integration Cloud. As a part of this session, we are going to talk about how to trigger a REST integration with JSON payload. And we can see how to process the JSON payload to ATP tables. Okay. In the ATP tables, we can capture the payload and we can uh, invoke the PLSQL package in order to load the data into ATP table. In YC Gen3, when you active an integration, it allows us three levels of tracing, production, audit and debug. If you enable an integration with audit and debug mode, if you observe some information about the payload is stored in the system. Okay, that is not recommended in the production environment to enable the payloads. Okay, the reason behind your uh, payload data have some sensitive information. That means we are uh, sending some information, sensitive information from source to target systems. Okay, and also uh, when you are working the real time projects, uh, when it's come to daily supporting activities and uh, troubleshooting issues, okay, this sensitive information, the payload information is very crucial. Okay, in this case, Oracle recommended uh, we have to use a database audit table. Okay, you can capture the all the log information. The agenda of this session is to auditing framework and uh, we can store the payload in ATP tables. Okay. So as a part of this uh, demonstration, we are going to uh, create a uh, REST trigger connection. Okay, we will send the uh, AP invoice details. By using a stage activity, we can write in uh, stage virtual location. Okay, and then we can read the payload as a stage file activity using a package schema. Okay, and then we can insert the uh, data into uh, ATP tables by invoking PLSQL package. I have created a stage table in order to store the payload information. Okay, so I have created this table with the few columns like interface ID, interface name, status, error code. So payload is the CLAB column. In this column, we are going to capture the request payload. Okay, and also we can uh, uh, store the timestamp when this integration run. Okay, so to uh, insert the details in log table, I have created a simple package. Okay. So I am directly insert the data into in this table. We can uh, invoke this PLSQL package from the integration. Okay. Let's uh, start creating integration. We can invoke this uh, package and we can store the uh, payload information in this table. Okay. I'm going to create a app integration. So I am using the REST adapter that received the request from JSON sample payload. Okay. And we wanted to uh, store the payload in ATP tables. Okay. Let me uh, create a app done integration. Yes, sir. Okay. Invoice log integration. Okay. Click on create. Okay, I'm going to uh, configure the REST trigger connection. Okay, this is trigger. Continue. I'm going to select post operation. Just I can give na naming convention. Create invoice is my endpoint URI. Okay, so I'm going to configure only request payload. Okay. Okay. I'm going to uh, configure the invoice uh, details. Okay. So this is the payload which I'm going to store in the ATP tables. I'm going, I'm going to configure this uh, JSON payload. Continue. Okay. Continue. Finish. Save it. Okay. So now I'm going to uh, take the stage activity. Okay. 
we can write the payload in virtual location okay so what i can do i am going to take a stage activity write file okay you can select write file operation so i am going to give file name as invoices so you can give output directory okay you can declare a variable or you can directly hard code here okay continue okay now i am going to select the sample json document i already uh, save the save this uh, payload in uh, json format okay i am going to upload this click on continue drag and drop invoice request click on continue finish okay now let's open the mapper we can do the mapping okay invoice number invoice currency invoice amount invoice date business unit supplier supplier site and a description okay so the next one is the invoice lines okay so in a, each invoice contain multiple lines so that we can uh, repeat the each and every line okay first let's map with the line number and then line amount and uh, you have to select this distribution combination okay so i'm going to map this one also array element line invoice to line invoice okay save it okay so now what i can do i am going to take a uh, stage act again okay so i am going to read the file okay click on continue so by using opk schema we wanted to read the json payload as is right so that we are going to use the read entire file operation okay configure file reference not required okay so we can use the file reference okay just okay you can click on here write response write response ics file take the file response file reference okay click on continue so i am going to select the opk schema here okay click on continue okay let me select the opac schema okay click on continue finish so when you use the opac schema it will read the uh, json format in base64 format right so what we can do let me invoke the atp package db package okay so in order to uh, invoke the pl sql package i'm going to configure the atp connection okay load log okay load log just i'm going to select the pl sql procedure okay i'm going to select the schema i'm going to select the schema and then let me select the log package okay this is my package okay this is my package name so we are going to use this procedure okay interface log okay this is the procedure which we are going to use okay insert interface log details this is the procedure 
okay click on continue click on finish save it open the mapper okay so interface id i am going to give something okay int 0 0 1 okay interface name invoice creation so just we are submitting the request i can give either new status or submitted status anything is fine okay okay so i don't want to do anything so i'm going to capture the payload right so let's open the write file response okay sorry read file you have to go to the read file response here you can see the opaque schema right so this uh, opaque schema is exist in the base64 format right now we have to decode this format in order to do that what we can do okay let me capture the payload map it then you can apply decode base64 okay put here okay okay and in insert timestamp i'm going to take current date time Okay, I'm going to take a current date time. Okay. Validate. Okay, save. I'm going to enable the business identifier. Let me activate the integration. See, when you activate the integration, it will ask for the audit and debug modes, right? So anyhow, we are parking the details in ATP tables. Now we will enable with the production only. Okay. So this is not required. Click on active. integration is active let's go go back to the backend table let's see whether data is existed or not okay no data exists in this table okay so let me run this integration run okay so i am going to enable the payload okay this is the payload which we are going to submit Okay, let me run this integration. It's running. Okay. So let me run the select query. See here you can see the interface ID, interface name, status submitted. If you see the payload, payload stored in a json format okay in this way we can store the payload information in atp tables okay 
in the real time projects so when you are invoking any apis or soap request okay you can uh, capture the both request and response payloads so when you are troubleshooting these issues so this payload is very crucial to analyze the issue okay 